Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean um, you, uh, you got the, you, you know, some sense of, of what Steve and I have been working on with Delia and, and uh, Lauren Unova in the, over the last um, year or 18 months or so. Um, uh, I think that, that, I mean, I'm going to mainly talk about um, that through introduction, um, rather, because I know you've got some very specific questions. Um, and I think certainly, I mean, Steve and I have worked together a long time. And, um, and, and for us, I think that one of the chief conclusions that have come out of, of that, and you saw it in, in some of our remarks about uh, benchmarking, is the issue of commitment. And that is that in countries where um, you have relatively weak capacity, um, we can we can rush to, as we so often do, uh, investing in physical infrastructure, um, for example. And you know, we we always come up with the 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 uh, issue of laboratories. I guess they're, they're always the sort of love hate thing that everyone points to, um, but. Unless you have laid down and you have in place firm evidence of uh, commitment towards um, improving food safety systems across the public and private sector, which puts the focus very much, and I know and Delia just spoke about this, uh, uh, on incentives, then whatever you do, you're going to struggle in terms of sustainability. Um, and so by commitment, um, you have on the one hand policy frameworks, and by this, I mean not just having things written down because you know we have so many cases of very nice policy frameworks, you know across uh, countries of all sorts of levels of income, but actually policy frameworks where there is effort, real effort um, to implement. Um, obviously, <laughs> the regulatory sphere, and then the resource sphere. And um, and across all of that, um, there is the the critical issue of incentives. And one of the the, the uh, interesting um, um, focuses of the work that w that we did, and I know from feedback from from some uh, readers of the study, they weren't altogether happy with this, is this interplay between. Uh, or, or the, the parallel issues of capacity versus demand. And this idea that um, what we need to see is capacity increasing over time, roughly in parallel with how demand is changing. So that is the need and the demand for uh, particular elements of food safety control. And that is not only the level, but it's about where those things are positioned. And again, there was discussion just, just a minute ago um, on the importance of the informal sector and, um, and about you know, whether, because, because you can have uh, developments of capacity that actually outstrip the need. And, you, and again, I'm gonna come back to laboratories and where you have so many cases of uh, laboratories or inspection systems or certification systems auditing where we have the capacity in place and no one actually demanding these things. And so we end up either they fall by the wayside or we find ways of funding them through changes in regulation that require these things to be used, even though there's not actually a good case for it in terms of food safety. Um, or um, uh, you know, resources are just not there. Um, and because no one is actually using these things. So, so I think those are some of the, the wider issues that I think are important, um, that are the bedrock uh, of improvements in food safety that come way before any, any sort of physical infrastructure um, um, uh, and, uh, and, and so on. So anyway, that, that, that are my very general comments because I know you have some... Yeah, I have a couple of specific questions. One of them has to do with the issue of incentives, where do private standards fit into the incentives oh. and do they help or hurt the question of informal markets? Um, I mean, 
it, it, the, the private standards issue, I think, is very interesting because it's almost, you know, the, the go to um, topic of conversation now when we when we come to food safety. And I think it's important to put private standards to reflect on why where private standards come from, um, what their role is um, and think about what we're likely to see with private standards. Uh, in a low and middle income country. Private standards are motivated by the interests, obviously, of private stakeholders. Um, they are predominantly a mechanism through which private stakeholders manage transaction costs, uh, manage risk um, associated with um, food safety. And could you give an example or two, just so we know if what you're referring to more tangibly? Right. Yeah, um, I, I'll, I'll, I, if you give me a couple of minutes, I, I, I will come to that, I, I think. And if okay. not, you can tell me. Um, I mean, the important thing with, I mean, most private standards take as their starting point regulatory compliance. In fact, across the board, they require that you, you comply with, with regulations in the context with which, within which compliance is happening and almost always international standards. Um, so there are you know, re, you know, important relationships there. Now, where we've seen private standards in a lower middle income country context emerge, it was, first of all, with respect to exports. Um, and there we, you know, everyone you know, talks about, you know, first of all, supermarkets in Europe and then the spread of those to, to elsewhere in their procurements and so on. And then we're beginning to see particularly middle income countries uh, where we have foreign direct investment, particularly in the retail sector, the role of multinational corporations predominantly, uh, where we're beginning to see them emerge within um, a, a domestic sphere. Now, across all of those spheres, they are really about um, meeting food safety standards that are required by a particular private sector um, entity, a buyer, um, and trying to either reduce or redirect the costs uh, of ensuring that those things have been um, uh, complied with. So, for example, um, uh, in a traditional um, sphere of you know, assessing compliance, what would have happened would be a supermarket may you know, um, uh, inspect their, their supplier. They would incur the costs of doing that. Um, and if the supply was, you know, up to standard, they would they would buy from them. With systems of certification associated with private standards, um, uh, what we see is the cost of that being pushed onto the supplier because they have to be pre-authorized through some system of auditing and certification, etc., before um, being able to supply a particular retailer. So that's you know an an an, an example. Um, I mean, what I think is interesting about private standards in a, in a poorer country context is that where these things emerged initially was actually in a rich country context. So they emerged alongside uh, fairly robust, well-developed systems, public systems of food safety control, so regulatory systems, et cetera. What we're seeing in a poorer country context is the gradual emergence of private standards where that is not the case. Um, and I guess one of my concerns is that what we don't see emerge is private standards being seen as a substitute for public control systems, public regulatory systems, um, because Private standards, number one, you know, their reach will always be limited to where they're being applied, and that will be within, you know, the generally the formal sector. Um, secondly, they strive to achieve levels of food safety which are about the needs of private sector buyers rather than some social optimum. Um, um, and I think there are also issues to do with accountability and democracy, because presumably in democratic societies, we 
we see a key role of the public sector linked to government where systems are democratically accountable. Right. And that's why we have laws and, and it's important that those things are democratically uh, accountable. And I think with private systems, you know, there can be some issues about that. Certainly a lot of political scientists raise that about private systems of, of, of certification. So, so I think that private standards certainly have a role to play. Well, they're already playing that role. And we're beginning to see um, intersections and even interdependencies between regulatory systems and, um, and private standards. So, for example, where regulators codify or recognize private standards in assessing compliance, and you're beginning to see that in certainly in some um, industrialized countries. Um, um, so I don't think that we can see the things as entirely separable, but I think they, I think we're, you know, they raise, they raise some very interesting issues, the intersections and the blend and the balance between these things. Great. Thank you. I, I wanted to see whether you want to comment on that too, and then we'll yeah, go to Yeah, I now. just wanted to jump in. Um, I think one thing, of course, private sectors have been extremely successful in, in, in export. And what happens in export? You, you're growing beans in Kenya. You get a very nice premium if you can get it into that export market. And then you've got a sort of a third party in Europe who's testing your beans and who has got you know, no incentive to, to lie about your beans. If they're unsafe, that's it. They're, they're kicked out. We don't have that working in, in, in the domestic markets, even in the formal sector, even in the supermarkets. It's... It's a whole much more, um, there aren't those checks and balances in place. One, we don't have the food safety surveillance, so we don't know when people get sick. If somebody gets sprouts and E. coli and it's, it's, you, you get found out, they're found where those sprouts have come from, and it's a big deal. It's not a big deal anywhere in developing countries because it's so far to, hard to find where it came from. And then the other thing about private sector is, you know, big business is, is about the bottom line. It's not your friend. It's not really trying to make food safer. They will do exactly as much as they need to, to not have problems for them. And that's a lot of leeway. That's a lot of laxity with standards in developing countries. But just very quickly, private, we think of private standards as being whatever, te Tesco or, or Global Gap. But informal markets are not unregulated markets. They're regulated by a whole pattern of culture and norms and patterns and what people expect and, and the trade-offs people make. So there's another whole set of unencoded private standards which actually are highly important for the safety of food and which a lot more could be done to make them work better. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, thank you. We're going to go back to drugs. Um, and I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Pisani to give a very brief overview, then I'll ask you the couple questions. 